When we talk about accelerating storage I.O. to GPUs, the biggest gains we have at our disposal today come from completely removing the CPU and its memory from the path between your file system and your GPU. So that we're all on the same page, let's talk about what this really involves. The traditional way of reading data from a file system to be processed on a GPU is a two-step process. First, you read data from the file system into CPU memory, and second, you move that data from CPU memory to GPU memory using CUDA memcopy, HIP memcopy, or the appropriate OpenMP pragmas. If you map this read operation to a typical GPU node like the one shown here, we see that there's a few places where this process can be slowed down. First, if your PCIe is oversubscribed and you have NICs or GPUs hanging off of PCIe switches, your NICs and GPUs might be fighting with each other for bandwidth to and from that CPU memory. Second, if you have another MPI process running on the same node that's doing memory-bound computation, your I.O. and that other process will be fighting with each other for CPU memory bandwidth and CPU cycles. In GPU-rich node architectures that may have a lot of PCIe switches in them, this problem can get a lot worse. On the right here is a diagram of a DGX A100 created by our friends at Microway, and its logical representation is shown on the left. We can see that there's huge bandwidth between PCIe devices like the NICs and GPUs, but by running all storage I.O. through the CPU, that NIC to GPU bandwidth is reduced by almost half. NVIDIA and Mellanox solved this problem for MPI a while ago using GPU Direct RDMA, which allows a NIC to send and receive data directly into GPU memory without ever bouncing through CPU memory. The underlying technology that makes this possible is called peer-to-peer -peer RDMA, and what we're going to talk about today is extending that concept into storage I.O. This peer-to-peer -peer RDMA bypasses the CPU entirely, avoiding that potential bottleneck between PCIe devices and CPU memory. Instead of first issuing a read followed by a mem copy, though, you have to use a new API to perform this operation in a single step. NVIDIA's GPU Direct Storage, or GDS, is the first production-ready implementation of this technique for GPUs, and it provides this KU file read call to accomplish this peer-to-peer I.O. operation. As I'm showing with the yellow arrow on the right here, you can see what the potential benefit would be on this hypothetical DGX platform. Instead of being limited by that 120 gigabytes per second between PCIe and CPU memory in steps one and two, data can flow freely between the NICs and the GPUs at that full 200 gigabytes per second bandwidth when using GDS. Of course, there's no free lunch here. Using peer-to-peer -peer for file I.O. is trickier than using peer-to-peer -peer for MPI because unlike MPI, file systems are implemented in the OS kernel itself. Bypassing the CPU means bypassing the OS, and this means we can't use kernel features like the page cache when we're using peer-to-peer -peer RDMA for I.O. We also can't use standard POSIX read and write calls anymore because those call into the OS kernel. Instead, we have to use a special API such as that provided by GDS, and this means code changes have to happen somewhere to swap all of your POSIX reads and writes out for KU file reads and KU file writes. You may have to do this in your application itself, but as we'll hear shortly, some I.O. middleware like HDF5 already supports GDS, and so if you're using HDF5, you may be able to get the performance benefits of GDS with minimal application code changes. Because peer-to-peer -peer DMA is fundamentally a PCIe-based technique, it can work for both file systems on locally attached NVMe and network file systems. However, your file system does need to support GDS to get the full performance benefits of CPU bypass. The good news is that many of our favorite parallel file systems like Lustre, Spectrum Scale, and Vast already support GDS, but not all of them do yet. That said, because this technique is all about I.O. to and from the GPU, you only need to worry about the client side of your parallel file system to get the performance benefits of peer-to-peer. -peer. So if you already have a Lustre file system, you don't have to go out and buy all new server hardware just to get GDS support. Instead, it may just be a simple matter of updating your Lustre clients. There's a lot more going on under the hood of peer-to-peer -peer DMA and GPU direct storage specifically, but hopefully this whirlwind tour sets the stage for some productive discussion later.